Claudio Roditi, are you there? Uh, hello, me. Hello, Claudio. I'm Thank trying you. to figure out this telephone here. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. As you know, uh, Red Rodney passed away within the last 24 hours, and yeah. you and uh, Red share the tradition of the trumpet. Uh, just, uh, I just, very, just a few days ago, I spoke with uh, the uh, band director of, at uh, Northern Illinois University, uh, Rome Odell, who is a very close friend of, of Red's, you know. And I talked to, to Ron, and, and he said that they had found another tumor or something, and I was ready to phone him, you know, to see how he was doing and everything, you know. So I feel very, very sad today, man. When you think of his uh, contributions to uh, the art of jazz trumpet, what do you think of? I think, I, well, actually, I think of Red Rodney more as a human being, you know, as an individual, because uh, what a beautiful person, you know, he was. What a warm, uh, warm person. And, and uh, as far as the trumpet player, I mean, he was the uh, cat during the bebop era, besides Dizzy and Fats Navarro, you know, and Kenny Dorham, a little bit younger. But, uh, and Howard McGee and Red Rodney, of course, you can't, you know, skip uh, Red and, and uh, talk about the bebop days, you know what I mean? Yes. I want to thank you for taking time between sets, Claudio, uh, to um, pay respects to Red Rodney, and uh, may you have a very warm and memorable two sets in his memory there. Well, we definitely will dedicate this next, uh, the next set to And uh, it was a, as a trumpet player, he was a marvelous uh, uh, musician, and he had, you know, he had so much problem with his teeth, and uh, he had implants put, he had to rebuild his embouchure at, uh, you know, at, at, uh, at the age of 50 years old or something like that. And uh, you know how hard it is. Every time you you just change a little bit for, for a trumpet player, anything that you change in your mouth makes a huge difference. So he had implants put, he had to rebuild his embouchure, and then all of a sudden he was playing all the way up to high Fs and, and Gs and with the same ease as he used to have before. It's fantastic, you know? Claudio Roditi, thank you very much for your comments. Lee. Talk to you after the uh, listen, after listen, the set. This is the problem. That's why I wanted to say hello to you right now. I think it's going to be very, very difficult after the show to uh, to uh, get together with you on the phone. We'll talk again then, sometime soon. We definitely will. Thank you for your time. Thank you, and it was nice to meet you today. Thank you. Voices and faces for the nineties. Among those voices and faces are the soloist, uh, alto player, Greg Abati, the trumpet player. Claudio Roditi, who doubles on flugelhorn and composes, and that was Claudio Roditi's composition, Blues for H.O. Claudio Roditi and Greg Abati are going on stand at 9 o'clock at the Dakota Bar and Grill tonight, and I thought you'd like to meet them, and here they are. Welcome in. It's good to have you there again. Uh, hi, Lee. Great How have you been? How have you been? Pretty good. That's good. I, uh... I wanted to ask both of you about your uh, your teamwork and partnership, you and Claudio, and you might just describe that, uh, oh, gee, Greg. Well, Claudio and I, uh, we we don't play uh, every week together, but we uh, occasionally team up in different parts of the country when he's available, um, and when we can make it happen. We we've been to many places through the country, including the Jazz Showcase in Chicago. Uh, two times, and we played in uh, New York uh, several times in New Jersey, here at the, at the Dakota, for example, and Washington, and the different parts. But um, we both have our own uh, uh, bands and our own touring schedule, but we like to um, get together when it, uh, and it works out, you know? And recording-wise, he's on my, my last CD that I just recorded in July. I mean, this was released, the one features the... Uh, Claudio with Kenny Varon Trio, you have that. Just played a cut from it. Yes, uh, right. About that, um, about that teamwork and the way you work uh, musically when you're in the studio. Is there any way you can uh, tell us about the chemistry that the, you know that happens, uh, that the action that uh, results? Oh well, it's just a matter of usually uh, we're we're pressed for time in the studio, and a lot of times we just get there. Like for this session, I can tell you, we. Uh, had seven to twelve at midnight in New York. Five and, hours. Yeah, and we got there, and uh, Ben Riley came in at seven thirty, 
we didn't start to record till close to eight o'clock, and uh, the guys really never saw the music before. And we we did that CD, and we ended right at midnight. And a lot of times in my career, I've I've had like um, short sessions like that. You know, the the last CD with Claudio with Straight Ahead was a five hour session, and uh, usually it just comes together. You know, it just but um, basically I feel the tunes don't evolve as much because we've never played them before, but we, we do play them one or two takes, and that's the way it was. And, of course, uh, that means you've got to really hit the time commitment, but also get all the art together and the creative uh, yeah. juices flowing. Well, with, with a room session like that, you know, it, it's hard to, to go wrong. It's going to sound good and feel good, you know, and, and Claudia and I, uh, we, we seem to play well together in, in the in the phrasing is, is always real good, you know, for me, I feel. So, people comment about that, too. They all, uh, like last night, some were saying how they like to hear us play because we seem to uh, get right in on target, as they put it, on the notes. I'll say, especially on some of that Gillespie material that uh, yeah. you and Claudio played last night. Yeah. Is Claudio nearby, by chance? He sure is. I'd like very much to uh, introduce him to the audience here. There he is. I'll see you, Ray. Thanks very much. Have a wonderful session tonight. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Yeah. Happy holidays. Greg. Uh, hello, Ray. Hello, Claudio. Well, How are you doing? <laughs> fine. How are you? Pretty good, thanks. Pretty well, good. Welcome into Minnesota Public Radio. Thank you very much. The jazz image here. Uh, and uh, I wanted to ask you, Claudio, the same question that I asked uh, Greg. How... How the interplay and the teamwork uh, goes together, whether it be studio or live and on stand with, with no microphones um, pointed toward uh, a CD uh, result or target. Well, it's a, uh, once, uh, it's, I think it's only a matter of knowing each other and, and uh, having played together for a while. You know, it's, you don't even think about that so much. It's the music. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you know each other, uh, you know, pretty well, so it's, I think that makes everything simpler. Lately, my problem is cataracts. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Every my. time Greg brings a new tune, I freak out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, well, well okay, we'll get it fixed one of these days. Oh, well, I hope soon. You know, but um, that's, uh, that's one of my worries now, to read, uh, read new music, you know, because it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit hard. And you're a demon reader. <laughs> well, no, more or less. So I wouldn't say. Uh, I wouldn't say. I, I did a. I did a, a gig with uh, Marvin. Uh, not Marvin Stem, but uh, Alan Rubin, the trumpet player, used to be at Saturday Night Live, the show. Yes. And I mean, I was impressed with these guys. With this guy's uh, reading chops, it was just unbelievable, you know. Which studio work really requires, doesn't it? Yeah, sure, sure. He was one of the top uh, when the studio thing was, re you know, really up in New York. You know, now it's. Uh, it's not the same as it used to be, but uh, I would I consider myself only a, a decent reader, you know. Well, Claudio, for improvisation, and you have these two instruments, uh, the trumpet and the flugelhorn, mm -hmm. and uh, for example, with the flugelhorn, uh, what do you um, find in that instrument that uh, you know adds to your performance and and and. Uh, the kind of artistic uh, objective that you want to hit. It's basically just sound because I, because uh, I think musically I approach you know everything more or less the same way. Even if I if I if I was to be a piano player, I would play more or less the same way. But uh, the tone is different. You know, tone, the tone is uh, broader, is mellower you know, on the flugelhorn. Yes, yeah, contrary. So and you don't you try not to blow it as hard as you blow a trumpet. But the basic ideas are the same. It's just the color of sound that is a little bit different. You know. Between the trumpet and the flugelhorn. Yeah, plus I, on top of that, I play a German rotary valve trumpet, which has a, a darker sound anyways. And uh, so uh, sometimes it's funny because even in, in recording, sometimes it's hard to tell one instrument from the other, depending on the way it's recorded, you know? Yes. Thanks for taking time to give us a little insight on that and mm -hmm. how you use those instruments. My pleasure. I... I uh, I wanted to ask you, last night you did a short, uh, memorable salute to John Burke's Dizzy Gillespie. You met him along the line a long time ago, didn't you? Yeah, no, it wasn't, wasn't, it wasn't that long ago. It was uh, <clears throat> around 1980, I can't remember if it was 88 or 89, when they formed the United Nations Orchestra. 
and uh, they signed me to be part of that group, you know. And uh, recalling that experience, uh, what comes to mind? The UN oh, experience. Oh, they opened up so many doors. I mean, for 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 one thing, you know, just to be in the in the company of Dizzy, you have a chance to meet so many people. You have a, a chance to play so many places, to go business class to Europe, to stay in five star hotels. You know. There's all kinds of things that come along with that. And, and musically, uh, musically was fine, but I mean, musically was nothing that exceptional because I like to play in a small group, and this was a larger ensemble, you know? Which requires a whole different approach, doesn't well, it? Yeah, plus, you don't have a much chance to solo anyways. And you're a soloist at heart. But yeah, I like to play quintet, you know, sextet maximum. So uh, musically, was, was, it was fine, you know, but... Uh, and more the, the opportunity to be in the company of Dizzy and, and to do the things I told you that we were doing, is, uh, that's fantastic, you know. Claudio Rodidi, I know you're going on stand with Greg Abati at 9 o'clock at the Dakota Bar and Grill. Thanks for taking time before you go on stage. Thank you very much. Uh, thank and a you. pleasure to meet you. It was good to see you, too. Thanks very much. Okay. Uh, have a good night now. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot, Lee. Happy holidays. Same to you. Bye-bye. Greg sends his best, too. Bye.